Hey everybody, it's Hyper, and today I'm going to be starting off this new series where I talk about all the optics and rifles and guns and scum, and I'm going to teach you how to use them. That way you can become better killers, better defenders, and better survivors on Scum Island. Not only that, I'm a huge proponent of the Second Amendment, and I believe that gun education and responsible gun ownership is one of the most amazing things that humanity um, can take for granted sometimes. And I want to educate people and help them uh, bring context to the firearms that are in our pop culture, such as video games like Scum right? I'm going to start the series off by talking about how to use the ACOG and why it is absolutely, undeniably, the best scope in SCUM for a number of reasons. Now, I know many of you might be asking yourself, what is an ACOG? Well, ACOG stands for the American College of Obstetrician... Wait, no, that's not right. Um, yeah, well, that, that was an acronym that says ACOG, of course, but uh, the, the real ACOG is an acronym as well, but it stands for Advanced Combat Optical gun sight. I know, I know, it's a long name and it really uh, seems kind of unnecessary, but hey, it's the army. They like to do flashy things that make them sound cool. In the Marine Corps, we just called it the RCO, which stands for Ranged Combat Optic, unlike Advanced Combat Optical Gun Sight. Like, which is advanced? Is it the combat that's advanced? The optical part of the gun sight? Or the gun sight? I don't know. The army's weird like that. We like efficiency, getting the job done in the Marine Corps, and um, you know what? I don't know. If we're on the efficiency note, I guess ACOG is two syllables and RCO is three, so... I don't know. Maybe I just needed a reason to trash on the army, but, um, you know, who needs a reason, right? <laughs> Alright, I'm just kidding. In good fun. Anyways, ACOG is the Advanced um, Combat Optical Gun Sight, and this was a program made by the U.S. military because they realized that in the modern day, we're not on rank and file like the Civil War. We're not fighting people just in the forests like we were prior. We're not just fighting people in trenches. In the modern day, uh, battlefields are very, very uh, modular environments. They change all the time. And this means that our soldiers and our fighters and Marines and all of all of the stuff in between need to have a, a way to make it so they can range and acquire their targets and engage their targets accurately at the maximum and minimum capabilities of their firearms in any environment, whether it be from one meter away to 800 meters away, which is hope, uh, so happens to be the maximum effective range of the M16A4 service rifle, which you see in the game Scum. All right, everybody, let's take a pause really quick from talking about the origins of the ACOG, and let's talk about a few misconceptions about optics and iron sights that exist in uh, the world of guns in modern day. And that's that um, if you use an optical sight, you are a less proficient shooter than somebody who would prefer iron sights. And this other misconception that uh, iron sights are somehow superior to optical sights because, um, according to people, the argument is they cannot break. Um, this, this is just factually wrong. None of this, you know, is based on any truth. And I don't know, it's just kind of like a, uh, it's like a pissing contest between like older military veterans and newer ones. Now, people think that having the advantage of a zoom and a reticle will make you a better shooter. This is not true. Shooting, marksmanship, and your um, skill level is not based on your equipment. It's based on the fundamentals of marksmanship, your ability to manipulate and understand um, your weapon, as well as understand... Um, the relationship between your environment and the ballistics of the weapon you are firing. If you suck shooting with iron sights, you're going to suck with an optic just as bad. If you suck shooting with an optic, you're going to be bad with iron sights too. They don't make you a better shooter. They just allow you to get better um, and more accurate or precise views of the battle space. So if you're one of these like older um, gentlemen or veterans that thinks uh, that um, optical sights are somehow easier um, and they make people who suck at shooting better at shooting, it's not true. I, I, I've been shooting since I was a very young person, all the way up until I joined the Marine Corps, and I shoot avidly after my military service. And um, I'm going to tell you something right now. Um, I train with op optical sights and iron sights. They both are great, but iron sights will never beat a good optic such as the ACOG. The ACOG is just as durable, if not more durable, than iron sights, and the advantages it gives you are just amazing, right? They don't make you a better shooter, though. If you understand your iron sights and um, how to use it at different ranges, it's no different than something like any kind of optic that zooms in. So stop perpetuating these lies. It's blatantly not true. If you use optics, if you use iron sights, you're either a good shooter or you're not a good shooter, and that is just the reality of the beast. Now, um, it created this beast, which is based off of the TA-33... Um, really RCO in real life. 
and the real life counterpart is excellent. I used it in the Marine Corps for five years. I loved every bit of it, and this sight is sold on me. I absolutely love it, especially the chevron design that they chose to put in this gun, and this for another uh, number of reasons. And you may ask yourself, why is the ACOG so great? Why is Hyper shilling it so hard to us? Well, it's, it's a number of reasons. One is, like I said, it's good at any range, whether zero meters or 800 meters. No other sight in the game is this good when you have zero sniping skill. The next thing is it's got an excellent sight picture. It has a good combination and balance of field of view as well as zoom. So it doesn't matter if you're clearing a building doing mount um, tactics or mount combat or if you're aiming at something across field 800 meters away. There's enough zoom there to where you can acquire your target better, but there's not too much zoom to where if you're using it indoors, you have to rely on aiming down sights rather than using your optic. This has such a, a good and balanced um, reticle that you can use at any distance. The next thing is it's got night sights. Um, I don't care who you are, night sights um, are a thing that you need, especially in a survival game or a military combat game, because you do a lot of fighting at night during the golden hour and stuff like that, and your sights can be difficult to see. I don't care what anybody says. Even if you have night sight, iron sights, glowing iron sights, it will infinitely be better to have a scope that has a precision night sight than it would be to have iron sights. I don't know if you guys have ever tried to use iron sights in the pitch black night and scum. You can barely see the front sight post. This solves that issue. The next thing is, it's a BDC sight, um, and it also has built-in range estimation. So you don't need any sniper skill to gauge the range of your target, and you don't need any sniper skill to try and guess how far the bullet's going to drop at different distances. You can just look at the reticle of the sight, and you could figure out how far the bullet's going to drop and how far away your target is. And there's no other scope in SCUM that does this. Now, what are the in-real-life uh, benefits to it? Why, why in real life is this uh, important to know? Well, um, going off of the notion that I want people to understand firearms in the context of their life and in pop culture, um, I want you guys to understand that this site in real life was... There's a lot of research that went to it. They did a damn good job. But it's incredibly durable. You can beat the hell out of this thing. I've literally seen people drop it out of multi-story buildings onto the site, onto concrete, and uh, the site still functioned. It may have lost its zero. It may have gotten a little scuffed up on the outside, but it still was able to do its job perfectly fine. This thing is insanely durable. You have to try to break this site in order to make it not function correctly. The next thing is, is it's extremely easy to use. If you know how to sight in iron sights, you can sight in an RCO or an ACOG sight. Um, and that's that's crazy. To, for all the features it has, and to have that simple ease of use, is it makes it uh, just an excellent thing to have in the hands of the average, um, you know, infantryman on the front line, right? All right, so let's get on um, into the um, portion of the video where I talk about how to use the ACOG now that I'm done showing it to you guys. Now, um, let's explain the reticle and the scope. Let's uh, take a look down sights of our rifle really quick. Now, you're going to notice when you aim down the rifle, uh, or aim down sights, you're going to see uh, this stuff on the left and right of the post. It's range, wind, temperature, humidity, pressure, all that. Don't worry about that stuff. That's only if you have advanced sniping skill and scum. I think it's stupid because um, this does not exist in your sights in real life. You can get very advanced meteorological data collection devices. It's, it's just super unrealistic, though. <laughs> Excuse me. On the right-hand side, you're going to see the zero, four times windage. That also is complete fictional made-up BS. <clears throat> Excuse me. Whew. Um, now, the issue I have with it is, like, scum um, and game players, they're trying to be like, oh, yeah, realistic. Oh, yeah, survival. And then they do stuff like this that completely re ruins that. I don't know. It makes no sense to me. Sniper skill needs to be removed from scum completely. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm so sorry. Um, it's a bit uh, dusty in the house today. I was doing some vacuuming earlier. Anyways, let's look at the reticle itself now that we've um, covered what is not actually on the RCO and what's irrelevant to you. Um... But let's look at the target. Yeah, there you go. It's kind of hard to see in different levels of light, but uh, we'll start off with the basic shape. You can see that the basic shape of the reticle is this upside down V. We're going to call that the chevron. All right. Then there's this glowing vertical little line right below that, and that is going to be called either the post or the spear, right? Below that, connected to the spear, is the rest of this vertical line that is black. And it's got these little ribs coming off of it. Those are known as stadia lines. And you can notice that one is marked 4 and one is marked 6. The ones in between are implied that the one between 4 and 6 is 5, the one after 6 is 7, and then the one after that is 8. You're going to notice that trend is going from all the way from 1 to 8, which means uh, 800 meters, right? You're going to see why that's important later. 
So now that you understand the different names of these things, I'm going to show you um, how to properly use them. Right, so this is a BDC site, which stands for Bullet Drop Compensation Site. And this means that um, if you guys are not aware of this, bullets do not fire in a straight trajectory. They are in an arcing path. They're ballistic. The gravity is going to affect them the longer they go away from the muzzle of the rifle they were fired from. And eventually, the gravity is going to pull them down until they hit the ground. Now, we have to account for this at different distances, mean, it, meaning if you want to aim at a really far target, using the sa same sight picture, you're going to have to aim higher so the arc of the bullet will pass through the target at the proper distance. And this bullet drop compensator allows us to say, okay, at 400 meters, we have to aim using the four line. At six, we have to aim using the six line, and then so on and so forth. So, pretty easy, bullet drop compensator. And this is sighted in for 5.56 five, or two two three ammunition, particularly ball ammunition. Um... So it, it works really well. It's not going to be perfectly accurate with every type of ammo, but it's within the realm of accuracy, good enough so you could use it in a combat environment, right? So let me talk about which parts do which things. You're going to notice that the chevron has a very pointy tip at the very, very top. That will be known as the tip of the chevron. Now, if you sight your rifle in properly, the tip of the chevron should be sighted in for 100 meters. All right, now next we have 200 meters. The 200 meter mark, if you sight it in properly, will be at what we call the crotch of the chevron. And that's going to be that underside curve point of the chevron. Think of the inner part of your elbow or the backside of your knee. That point right there is going to be the crotch of the chevron. The next we have that post. Now that post is ranged, or the very top of that post, I should say, is ranged for 300 meters. We called it the tip of the spear, the tip of the post, or in the Marine Corps we called it the tip of the dick because literally the Marine Corps has to give a phallic name to everything. I mean, just ask what we call the funnels we use to fill up our trucks. I mean, come on, guys. you gotta got to entertain yourself somehow, right? So anyways, um, that very tip, 300 meters, covered that. The very bottom of that line is ranged for 400 meters, and you can tell because it's labeled four. We're going to call that the four line. And um, yeah, so so on and so forth. 500 meters is the next line, 600 meters is the next, so on and so forth. I feel like after you understand the chevron, the crotch of the chevron, and the post, everything else is pretty intuitive. So now you know at these different ranges, different parts of the site you have to aim with. Now, I know I shouldn't have to say this, but let's break it down Barney style because some people still may not understand how to use a site. At the four line, you're going to aim with the intersection of the stadium line, which is the smaller line horizontal to the large vertical line. You're going to put the intersection of those two lines on the target at 400 meters, and that's where it'll aim. And then the intersection for 600 meters, you know, you get the idea. Some people actually don't understand that. They don't have really a mind's eye that can picture that, so I, I have to explain that. Now, the next part that I love about this site is um, the stadium lines don't only tell you how to uh, compensate for bullet drop. They serve two functions. And the other function is they um, function as your range estimation tool. Now this uh, works in a way where it uses mills, which are basically a radial measure at um, different distances. It uses trigonometry, literally Pythagorean's theorem, and you can tell how far your target is based off of how big it looks to you. And if you have a reference, whether that be a reticle or something else, you can determine exactly how wide it is. This does all of that for you by having a standardized uh, width. Now, before we get into that, let's uh, let's just do a, a quick comparison, really quick. Um, let's put this rifle away, and let's go stand um, in front of the target right here so I can show you guys what it looks like. You're going to notice that the player silhouette is roughly the same width as the black part of this target, the um, human being outline, that silhouette. That is for a very specific reason. These are standardized targets made by particularly the U.S. military to mimic the average width, height, and profile of a combatant around the world. So it's roughly like five foot seven to like six foot two, um, and then a height of like, or excuse me, and then a width of anywhere between like 26 to like 36 inches. They took all these averages, they did a bunch of math, and they determined this is what the average fighter is going to look like at any given distance, their outside profile, right? Now, these inner white circles, those represent what is known as the vital region. Now, this is a 20-inch region, roughly the average is 20 inches, from armpit to armpit. So if you shoot at a target with a silhouette, you want your bullets to land in that vital region so you can produce a kill using your weapon. So you can't just aim anywhere on this big black blob this big silhouette you want to aim within this 
um, 20 inch region right there. And the Marine Corps, we train using targets called B mod targets. And those are good for, really, we train um, for them at 500 meters to make sure that we can still produce and still get used to shooting at such a small target 500 meters away using a relatively low zoom optic such as the RCO and it works fantastically. And just so you guys know, the target or the height of a scum character is 180 centimeters and the width of their shoulders is between um, 20 inches and 36 inches. So this works perfectly, especially in the game of scum because they did a lot of balancing and it works very well. This target is, I forgot the name of it. We use this exact same target too in real life. So um, it's another good proxy for showing you real world versus in game. Now that you know that um, this silhouette is supposed to mimic the width of the player or a person, um, I can explain how the rest of the site works. Now, let's uh, take a look over here. You're going to notice um, that the stadium lines, it's kind of hard to see in the game scum because, again, they didn't do a perfect um, perfect scale of it because, you know, it's just superimposed over the rest of the game rendering. But if you look at the four line, you're going to notice that it's slightly less wide than the chevron, the width of the chevron, tip to tip, horizontally. Then you're going to look at the six line. You're going to notice the six line is slightly um, smaller in width than the four line. You go down to the eight line, and you're going to say, okay, that's smaller than both of those. That's because the farther away something is from you, the less wide it looks, the smaller it looks. And this is standardized to that um, outer silhouette profile, the average width of a combatant at these different distances. So at 400 meters, the average combatant is going to have a width of that four stadia line. At 600 meters, the average combatant is going to have a width of the six stadia line. This is awesome because you don't have to do any of the math. You don't have to do any guessing. You don't have to just practice range estimation every day. You will always have a reference on you to tell exactly how far, or not exactly, it's, it's always an estimation how far the target is. Now, the width of the chevron is um, the width of a combatant at 300 meters. So, all you have to do is aim at the target and you say, okay, so the target is larger than the width of the chevron. That means it must be closer than 300 meters. And you're right. So if you're closer than 300 meters, all you have to do is just aim um, anywhere between the tip of that post and the very top of the chevron. And you're going to be guaranteed hits on your target at those distances. So it's really nice um, for ranges uh, closer than the 300 meters. And some of you might think like, okay, well, what about farther? farther ones um so there's a 50 meter mark there's a 100 meter mark 200 meter um and you're gonna see 200 meters it's closer to the witch of the chevron but it's still a little bit wider so you know it's not 300 but we're getting closer to there so you aim with like roughly the bottom of the chevron and you're gonna produce a hit at that distance now what about this target over here this one is ranged at 300 meters i'm just gonna range it really quick using the laser range finder just to show you guys that i'm not messing with you um, what do we get out of this? Again, I have no sniping skill on this character. 360 meters away. Now, let's put the chevron up next to the target and let's uh, determine the width. There you go. It's the exact same width as the chevron. The whole um, width of that silhouette is the same width as the chevron. Therefore, we know it's roughly 300 meters away. And it's a little bit smaller, so you know it's not 300 exactly, but it's closer to 400. It's not quite the width of the four line, but it's getting there. So you can tell, all right, this is between 300 and 400 meters away. So let's aim with the general post area, and it's going to produce a hit at that distance. I'll show you guys zoomed in um, just so you can get a better idea of how this works. All right, let's start off with the 100 meter mark. As you can see that this right here is 50 meters and this uh, monolith right here is 100 meters away. It's obscured, but we can use the width of the shoulders to determine how far the target is. We notice that it's roughly uh, one third the width of, um, or it's roughly three times the width of the chevron. So using the width of that, you know, it's three times closer. There it should be, therefore it should be three times the width. And we know that if it's three times the width of the chevron, it's gotta be 100 meters away. Now that we know it's 100 meters away, we're going to aim with the very tip of the chevron, as I said before, meaning we're going to put the very top point of that, like, say, let's just put it on the head of the target, and we'll fire and see where our bullet impacts. Now, again, um, interesting how that works. Again, there is a little bit of wind in the game, and this is not going to account for your windage, but uh, you can gauge that pretty easily on your own. But you see, I aim at the I aim at the head using the very point of the chevron, and the bullet is going to impact at the very tip at that distance. There you go. The elevation is exactly sided sided in for 100 meters. Let's uh, go ahead and take a look at 200 meters from here. And again, look, you can see it's slightly bigger than the chevron. Therefore, it's not 300 meters away, but it's smaller than previously. So it's somewhere in between there. Let's set it up for 200 meters, and we'll be right back. 
All right, this one is set up for 200 meters. As I said before, it is slightly larger than the Chevron. That's how we can gauge it's roughly 200 meters away. Now let's aim center mass with the crotch of the Chevron. And the crotch, like I said, is that inner bend of the Chevron. Let's fire. See where our round hits? Exactly where the crotch of the Chevron was aimed. So there you go, 200 meters, crotch of the Chevron. Your guaranteed hits on the target. There you go. Now let's set up for 300 meters. Um, and we'll come back to it. All right, now let's look down our sights at 300 meters. You're going to notice at 300 meters, the, the, sight, or the size of the target, the width matches the chevron pretty much exactly. That means you know it's 300 meters away, or you can get an estimation that it's roughly. There you go, right there. It's roughly 300 meters away. 300 meters, like I said, we aim with the tip of the spear, or the tip of the dip, as the Marines call it. So let's take a shot at this target that we have ranged using nothing but our sights to see if it really is 300 meters away using the tip of that spear. Again, we gotta wait. We don't have a high sniping skill, so we got a lot of scopes away, but we'll fire right at the net. All right, it's not perfect. Again, um, it's gonna be dependent on a lot, but you're gonna notice I'm aiming with the uh, tip of the spear at these distances, and it will produce hits. There you go. I was aiming with the tip of the spear at the bottom of the torso. I hit the bottom of the torso. So not accounting for wind or anything else like that. So let's wait till the tip gets near the head. We'll fire. All right, it, it fired and it hit roughly around the top of the shoulder to like the bottom of the head, which is kind of where we're aiming. And it's gonna follow the pattern of sway of your scope and all other regions like that. But I can show you, look, 300 meters, It's the elevation is correct. We're firing 300 meters away and we're producing hits on the target using the tip of the spear. There you go. It's, it's really neat how that works, isn't it guys? Perfect. You don't need a sniping skill to do that. Now let's look at this target over here. You can see that that target is the exact same width as the four stadium line. That means 400 meters away, we fire, we're going to get a hit using that four line. And I'm going to show that to you guys really quick. We're not going to go all the way down the line. I think you guys get the idea of how to use this system. But I'll show you one more example and then we can get onto some other stuff about the ACOG site. All right, right behind these bushes, straight ahead of us, that is the uh, 400 meter mark. Again, let's line it up. You can see the width of target is the same width as the four stadium line. We'll line up the four stadium line and we'll fire. And there you go. Our round hit the target 400 meters using the four stadium line. Again, it dropped a little bit more. This is dependent on a lot of things like pressure, wind, temperature, all that kind of stuff. But just for a, an estimation and getting effects on target at these distances, it's going to do the job. And we are aiming with that four stadium line and where it intersects that vertical line. And we are getting um, hits at the proper height. Now let's just adjust for the wind a little bit and fire. There you go. We're, we're, we're getting those uh, proper effects within the target area. And that's what we want to do. And as simple as that, guys, you just line up the width of the stadium line or the chevron, and it allows you to determine exactly how far you are from the target. Therefore, use different parts of the site to compensate for the bullet drop at that distance. Can't get any simpler than that. So I hope you guys learned a lot from this portion of the video. And we'll go back to talking about a little bit more about what makes the ACOG site so great. All right, now the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is if you aim down the ACOG site, you're going to notice that the site is illuminated, meaning it glows a little bit. It's got um, that lighted effect to it, and this is close to real life. You're also going to notice there's a lot of blur around that, and that is something that happens in real life as well, and you can um, accommodate that. Anyways, the reason it glows like this is because if we take a look at the outside of the ACOG site itself, we're going to notice that it's got this glowing-looking fluorescent um, stripe across the top. Now, this is a tube filled with a, um, uh, what is it called? A fiber optic, right? And what that does is it collects all the ambient light around you and it um, pretty much focuses that light and transports that light into the reticle where it reflects that light backwards and uh, in effect, it makes it brighter. It illuminates it. You're seeing that reflection of that gathered light in the environment. This is really cool, but it works so well that um, we actually would use electrical tape to cover up most of it because it would gather so much light that when you would aim down the sights, um, it would make them a little bit blurry like that. But if you covered it up with electrical tape and you kind of gauged how bright it was outside and you just moved it until you could see the site, you could get rid of that like outside blur you see on this one completely. And you could get really crisp lines on the outside of your reticle, which was really nice, especially if you're at a range and you're doing your qualification, right? Now, the other cool thing about the site is you don't need batteries to operate it. It's not like the red dot site where if you run out of batteries, your site's useless right? This is not the same thing. You don't need sunlight. You don't need batteries. You can um, see the illuminated site in um, complete absence of both those things. And that's because um, in, on top of the fiber optic, it also 
is a tritium site. So basically, what they have done is they've taken a tiny bit of tritium paint and they've painted it on that little etching within the internal lens, making it so even in complete absence of light, your reticle will still glow. And it works so good. So good. Your sight picture at nighttime with this scope is unparalleled. You're, if you've ever shot at night and you're relying on your night vision and observing and stuff like that, you're going to know that using those night sights can really detract from your night vision and um, your pupils working properly. Whereas this one doesn't do that. I don't know what the difference is and why that's the case, but using this at night will not affect your night vision or your pupil diameter. So that's another great thing about it. Uh, let's turn it to nighttime just so I can show you guys that this effect still works in uh, SCUM. Now we make it really dark. Aim down sights, you still got that nice crisp sight picture. You can still look at your target and be like, okay, I see that target over there. I'm gonna put my sight on it and I'm gonna fire. And there you go, we're producing hits on the target. Interesting how that works, huh? Now let's uh, switch to our other rifle we have on here and we're gonna aim down sights. The iron sights, you can't even see the sights, guys. You can't even see the sights, look at that. Aiming around, the, the front sight post is almost invisible. But when we switch back to our other, other rifle, oh, excuse me, our other rifle, you can see it now. You absolutely can see it now. So um, that's another huge advantage to the ACOG scope. Now, the next thing I want to show you, uh, sorry, I am using my server right now. So you can see that uh, Mr. Ludther here is having some issues. <laughs> Um, but yeah, in the daytime, you're also going to notice that um, if we use our second M16, that um, this this ridge, this carry handle is what it's called, um, it, it does take up quite a lot of your field of view around the target. It's nice because these sites, this, it's called a ghost ring site. It is a great site. I would think of all the front um, sites designed, these are absolutely the best when it comes to field of view, but it still takes up a large portion of it between you and the target and laterally of the target, especially at increasing ranges. So all of this area, center of the screen is kind of cut off by that. But if we switch to the ACOG, you're gonna see that you have your front sight region and this whole area at that distance, you can still have good situational awareness of the target area, but you also still have peripheral vision because you have enough eye relief where you can still see left and right in like your close distance vision. So there is a dead zone, but it's not in the target area and it's not near you. So it kind of makes it so any threats near you, you can still see and any threats far away, you still have a really wide field of view. That's another reason this is so good. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is um, I'm going to show you the difference between this and the red dot sight to show you that factually the red dot sight is not as good as this thing. And I will spawn an M82 scope as well. So I can show you that the M82 scope is great if you have high sniper skill, but it's not good unless you have high sniping skill. It's, it's nice because it's got the zoom factors, but I mean, you have to rely on guessing and known distances and stuff like that. So we're, we're gonna show you each one of those things. So we're just gonna pop the uh, red dot sight on this primary M16 right here. We're gonna switch to it. You're gonna notice that close in close distances, it's really awesome because wherever you aim the dot, that's where it's gonna hit the target. And it works, it works great. But at the same time, if the battery dies, you no longer have a red dot sight. You don't have sunlight, you, don't have longer, you no longer have a red dot sight. And you're also gonna notice that the size of this dot is quite large even close by. So if we try and use this at distance, you're gonna notice that even at 100 meters out, the dot is like the size of your target. That's intentional, it's part of like the whole um, MOA sight system. But once it gets farther than that, the sight, you can't really use it because it's so far away that the um, front sight is the size or larger than the target itself. You're no longer accurate at any of these distances. Now, it is great because you have a huge field of view. It's good for indoors, but unless you're fighting indoors or at really close ranges, it's kind of not the best sight you want to be using. Now, um, let's do the same, look at the same target at 100 meters, right? So that is the size of it. You can no longer get precision hits. Let's switch to the ACOG. 100 meters, you get precision hits. And close by, you can still get those precision hits. And you still have good SA of the target area. You can still see the uh, target's lateral and at close distance. All right, let's take off the red dot from the site and let's put on the M82. And I'm gonna show you 
um, the other effect this has. Now, if we're aiming with the M82, say, oh yeah, um, I'm in a different environment than I was before. I have to go inside, or I have to defend my base. Well, look what happens. You're zoomed in so far, you don't know what's going on around you. You've got good essay of exactly what you're aiming at, but unless you're already aiming at it and you already know where the target is, you are completely tunnel visioned from the rest of the battle space. And that's frustrating because, um, well, this means that, uh, again, like you're completely ineffective at anything else other than looking at your target. Now, this is good at far ranges. We could zoom in at this like 800, 900 meter target away. It's really good. Then again, though, you have no peripheral vision at that distance either. So you are suffering a huge loss of situational awareness when you're using the M82 scope. So this is good for sniping and sniping only, really. Now, again, let's switch to the A... Excuse me, the ACOG. We still got good situa uh, situational awareness. We see all our targets. We still got our peripheral vision. We get precision targets. And... Again, those targets are far, but we can still gauge the distance they are using our stadia lines, and we can still see them good enough to take some shots at them. See what I mean? And that's why the ACOG is so damn good at any distance, right? And people are saying, well, the M82 goes even farther than ACOG. Yeah, that's true, but the maximum effective range of this 5.56 five, um, chambered M16A4 service rifle or uh, Mark 18 or VHS, they're not going to have uh, any good effects on target at, after that distance. It's just too inaccurate. There's too many things at play for it to be effective at those ranges. So it's kind of really this null conclusion, right? So I don't know. Tell me what you guys think. Did you guys, did I convince you guys? Did you learn to love the ACOG site as much as I do? Because it is my favorite site in the game. And for all the reasons I mentioned, this is the best site in the game. You don't need to have any sniping skill to use it properly. And it's relatively cheap. And... You know, the primary rifles in the game, the good rifles, the Mark 18, the M16, are going to be able to use the sight quite effectively. I would recommend using those rifles versus the uh, AK or any other things, just because they have a really good balance of uh, recoil. They don't kick, they don't have a lot of muzzle rise, um, they're accurate to far distances, you can go auto, burst, single shot, they're just so damn good because of this combination with the scope and the weapon itself. So I recommend you guys get an ACOG as soon as you can and you will be a force to, reckon with, uh, to be reckoned with on the battlefield as far as PvP goes. So. Um, let me talk to you guys about why I made this video in the first place. Um, I am a military veteran. I spent five years in the Marine Corps. I absolutely love the, the military. I love my country. Um, but at the same time, I think we have become very politically divided in the United States. And um, as somebody who owns a firearm business themselves, I think that um, being able to think for yourself and defend your own life are two of the biggest things. Because if you cannot think your own thoughts and you cannot have control over how you protect yourself you protect your right to exist, then you have nothing, right? And before people try and say, oh, um, he's trying to sway us politically one way or another, I'm fairly moderate. I would say I'm slightly conservative, fairly moderate. But my point is, I don't care. I don't care what you identify as. I don't care what's between your legs. I think um, it doesn't matter if you're straight, gay, man, woman. You all should be understanding firearms, understanding why they're important to our history, understand how these tools can be used for the benefit of mankind, and understand that um, our very rights are dependent on things such as the ability to defend ourselves and defend what we're able to think and say. I think that's so important. So I want you guys to understand that with my channel, Hyper Lethal Nova, I uh, want to bring people together. I don't care about your religion. I don't care about your marital status. I don't care about your past history. I think every human being will be much uh, nicer and civil towards each other because an armed society is a polite society. And I think once we level the playing field for all, everybody will be treating each other with a lot more respect and dignity. And we will not have to worry about a lot of the strife and misunderstanding and bickering that's going on. So everybody is welcome to learn about firearms from me. Everybody is welcome to come here and ask me questions because, like I said, I think everybody should have an understanding of the history of firearms, why they're important, and the context um, that they come to us within our entertainment like video games, movies, and how that applies to the real world. So if you guys appreciate what I'm doing and you appreciate my message, feel free to check out my other videos, check out my channel. Um, I haven't really done a lot of firearm videos yet, but I plan on um, pretty much dishing these out as much as I possibly can because this is one of the primary reasons I made my YouTube channel in the first place. And you'll be seeing some uh, more real-life videos from me in the future about the firearms, um, the histories, and really um, the industry around it, right? So thank you guys so much. I appreciate all the support. I appreciate 
um, you um, giving me feedback. If you think I could be doing better, or if uh, there are certain things you liked, or if you have any requests for me, go ahead and leave them in the comments. Contact me in Discord. I really do want to build up this community of people who are kind of on the same page of just wanting a better world for everybody, especially in gaming. And again, gaming has turned into this woke mess nowadays, and I, I want to make sure that we have a safe haven to go to where you don't have to worry about how you criticize games, how you play games. Um, here, we understand it's for entertainment, it's for escapism, and we just want to have a good time with good people. So again, thank you guys for watching. I can't wait to see you guys in my next videos. I will see you then, and peace.